but I also think that people are going to realise that it's also an option. This doesn't have to be your only option, but it's something that you can definitely consider and it will no doubt be a bit of a trend. Hello lovely couples and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, then make sure you do click on the link below. Then you will not miss out on any of this juicy content to help make you a more stress-free wedding couple and bring back the joy and the fun. I am really, really hoping that you can hear me today over the rain that is currently going on in my office. I have mentioned it time and time again, but this is a loft conversion and we've got the old slanty windows and the rain is coming down proper hard, but I have to film before the fridge man turns up to fix my fridge. Yeah, I know. So I'm trying to fit this in, in between the lockdown craziness, children gonna be running around soon and the fridge man. So I'm going with the rain and I'm hoping it doesn't kill the vibe. Anyway, let's jump into this week's topic, which is should I have a micro wedding? Shall we dive in? Okay, so first things first, what is a micro wedding? Now, I have talked about downsizing your wedding to a micro wedding before, um, so I will link that video for you up there. But let's just very briefly touch on what is a micro wedding. Essentially, it is exactly the same as a normal wedding that you are probably accustomed to, but on a smaller scale, basically with less people. You still do all the same traditions, you still can make things beautiful, can make the day run the same, but with less people. That's essentially it. With say 20 to 50 people. That's kind of like your micro wedding kind of little stratosphere. It is different to an elopement and I have done a video on elopements as well so I will link that here for you which is much smaller scale, basically just a couple, an efficient and maybe a photographer and they're usually done in amazing places, in destinations where you wouldn't be able to take all your guests with you anyway. One of my friends is a photographer and she does amazing elopement weddings up in the Lake District on the top of mountains. I mean, it's insane. But that is not a micro wedding, that is an elopement. So go check out that video if you are interested in that. But we are talking about micro weddings. The thing with a micro wedding is, and I think what a lot of people are thinking right now, now that we are in 2021, and there's a lot of unknown this year still within weddings. And so I think more people are gonna be choosing this choice or at least considering this choice because hopefully it will be an option that we'll be able to have. Currently, as I'm filming this, we're in a lockdown here in the UK and no weddings are allowed, but I am very hopeful that weddings will start to come back this year and that the micro wedding will be the winner that takes all. But I also think that people are gonna realize that it's also an option and that we will see more micro weddings past 2021. So if you're watching this out of 2021, hi, Hopefully, this doesn't have to be your only option, but it's something that you can definitely consider and it will no doubt be a bit of a trend. But micro weddings don't need to be micro in terms of style, in terms of detail, in terms of everything. They don't need to be stripped back. They don't need to be the bare minimum just because you haven't got as many people there. So let's talk through the pros and the cons of having a micro wedding, and then you can work out whether you should have a micro wedding. So I'm diving in with the positives here because that's me, hey? And we're gonna start with the pros of having a micro wedding. Now, the big pro that you are going to notice is that your budget will stretch further. Now, perhaps you didn't have a massive budget to start with, so a micro wedding could actually work in your favor. If you did have a big budget and you're still willing to spend it, it means that you can literally make that work for you so much more. By having less people, you are spending less on your catering and your drinks, which let's be honest, takes up the majority chunk of your budget. I mean, I always say that venue and catering together are 45%. That doesn't include the drinks always. So it's a big chunk. And by cutting down the guests, you're cutting down the amount of people you need to feed, which is amazing savings on money. So that's a big saving. You also may not be going for a massive venue because you don't have 200 people to fill it. So you're gonna be looking at a smaller venue perhaps, in which case you're going to save money. Now, it's going to affect your budget in terms of saving money like I've just mentioned, but it's also going to affect your budget in that you will have more money because you've saved on those prior things that we've just discussed. You will have more money for flowers. You will have more money for details, 
you might actually be able to do favours, which let's be honest, have kind of died a death in recent years because people don't want to spend on favours that get left behind. But actually, if you've got say 30 people at your wedding, you might want to do that. You might want to do really super personal favours for your guests that really means something because you are so grateful that they are there spending their day with you celebrating your marriage. So it can become so much more personal and so much more detailed and so much more stylish because you're reallocating your budget to make it feel beautiful, which is why I said micro weddings do not need to be stripped back and they do not need to be bland. You will have less tables, which therefore means you will have less centerpieces and you will have less table placings and table settings, etc. So you can put more detail and more money towards the table settings that you do have. Again, meaning that you can just really ham it up in the areas that you are having because you're saving the number of people. I mean, amount of people is the biggest budget killer at a wedding, guys. The more people you have, the more your budget has to spread and to split across those people. So there's a little top tip for you. So with this new found budget, you can spread that money into more flowers, some incredible flower arches or hanging floral installations or whatever it is that you'd really dreamed of that perhaps you didn't think you could do by having less numbers, you can really do it. You may then also be able to really up your food if you were perhaps having something a little bit more relaxed but wanted to have really fancy steaks or whatever for your meal, perhaps now you can do that. There's less of you, you can put more money into the food for those of you that are going to be there on the day. But you don't have to spend the budget that you had and disperse it in different ways. You can also just save money by having a micro wedding. You can keep things as they were and just by cutting the numbers, you're cutting that budget down. So that is also a pro. And I'm sure that your wedding wouldn't have been boring and bland anyway. So you don't have to reallocate that money. You can just keep it as it was and scale it down. So I think those are massive, massive pros in my opinion. You can still have something really beautiful and have an amazing day with those people that are really close and special to you. But we are all about balance over here, so let me bring you those cons because you need to know them. You've gotta work out whether this is right for you. Okay, so moving on to the cons because we are all about balance here and it is really important to look at both the positives and the negatives and make sure that you know whether having a micro wedding is actually right for you. So obviously the biggest con in this one is numbers. You cannot have all your friends together, friends and family together in a micro wedding. Perhaps you only have 30 to 50 friends that you want to invite, in which case you can have them all there, but then you probably wouldn't be watching this video asking, should I have a micro wedding? So you know. But yes, if you want all your friends and family and you want a massive party vibe, then perhaps the micro wedding isn't for you. Another thing to consider is that suppliers or some suppliers have minimum spends. So you may find that a florist, for example, perhaps specifically a wedding and event florist, they may have a minimum spend of £2,000 for a wedding, in which case you might not want to spend that. You may be looking for just £1,000 to allocate towards your wedding flowers. My best tip on that would be good to go to a florist that has a brick and mortar store because they can be a little bit more flexible because they always have flowers in store and in stock for you whereas wedding and event florists will order them in specifically for you and they may have minimum spends and minimum orders that they have to meet that being said people are being a little bit more flexible and businesses are being a little bit more flexible nowadays because micro weddings are currently the situation. They are the future and they are what's happening. So do your research, but just bear in mind that some places will have a minimum spend. And then we move on to venues. Perhaps you've set your sights on having a traditional manor house, something really historic and beautiful, in which case some of those places are really quite big and quite grand, and they may have a minimum number of people that you have to host at the venue. Perhaps it's an 80 person minimum guest list, in which case it wouldn't work for a micro wedding. But they may have a space that is more suited to a smaller wedding, and in which case you can definitely investigate your options. I'm not saying it's not possible, but some venues just won't be able to accommodate the smaller weddings. 
so definitely have a look around what is available near you but if you are looking for the grand spaces then perhaps a micro wedding isn't for you essentially it comes down to what is important to you so should you have a micro wedding I don't know it's your call but hopefully by looking at these pros and cons you can suss out what really calls out to you do you actually just want something a little bit more intimate not an intimate wedding or an elopement but something a little bit more intimate where you can really put your budget into all the flowers and have some incredibly impeccable food and just have fun with those people close to you but still have exactly the same flow as you would if you had all those guests there or is that party just so important to you and you really just want to get on the dance floor and have everybody around you and just have an amazing fun party vibe i sit in the middle i really if i was to get married again i'd really have to think long and hard about which i would go for i mean i really do love a party but i think i would also just really want to get married and not wait maybe just host a party and another time and really just do something small and beautiful and something really memorable and special with all the personality and the detail and know that my budget can make it super amazing and then celebrate with a massive party at a later date. I don't know, I sit in the middle. What do you think you're gonna do? I hope this video has been a little bit helpful for you guys and that it kind of weighs out the should you, shouldn't you, should you postpone, should you just go for it? I don't know. And again, if you're watching this past 2021, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about with postponing but that's life right now anyway guys I hope you found this video helpful I will be back next week with some more wedding planning goodness until then guys happy planning and I will see you soon <laughs>